Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Suchedo Ye Lahudi San Miao San Putoshi. Namo Sadanto Suchedoya Alahadi San Mya San Putosya Shan 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 Wei Miao Fa Bai Chen Wan Zhao Yi Jin Tian Shou Chi Yuan Che Ru Lai Chi Yi Ready, here we go. Supreme and wondrous Dharma. Rarely even. But now we see it. May we try. Okay. I think I may have discovered the secret to our radio show, which is I had my browser open to our own webcast, and I think we were listening to ourselves. <laughs> Don't be delayed. Oh, my goodness. The wonders of global communication. Uh, I'm going to ask you to open the door again so we get some air. All right. 
Good evening, everybody in Berkeley, California, and around the globe, wherever you might be on YouTube. We are here uh, in Gold Coast, Queensland, uh, lecturing on the sixth ground of the Avatamsaka Sutra. I don't know if Michael Long knows that that was his uh, debut as a singer on YouTube. Uh, even though you're requesting Dharma, you're not actually, you know, out there competing with uh, In Sync and the Beastie Boys. Nobody competes with them. They're they're of history, right? One Direction, right? But there you are. You you may, we may have launched something in uh, a career in Dharma requesting from now on. People will be asking for it. the guy who was singing last time. Could we have him again? So my name is Hung Shur, and we're here. Uh, you notice we have a nice new background. All that was required was to move the computer up to my uh, loft here, where I do yoga and meditate and play guitar and also bow to the Buddha. It's my Buddha hall. And we turned it around so instead of having a blank wall with a, a black chair as the background, we'd have something a little more dramatic. Now, in order to see Master Shren Hua, I have to turn the computer to look at the side wall because Shifu's picture here is a nice big picture there. So I won't do that. That'll make Sam nervous. Sam Ong is here with me and in Studio Paramita. Uh, we're webcasting out, and it's very funky. In order to make my face look brighter, we put my bedroom lamp here, my bedside lamp, and we've got uh, all kinds of gadgets trying to make me look less uh, forbidding and not so shadowy. At least we have one one Dharma seems to be obeying, and that's the sound. I have a nice. Uh, USB Yeti microphone, which uh, makes it sound better than the onboard audio. We are learning as we go, by golly. And now I'm going to put us right here on the title of the Avatamsaka Sutra. And the one to pay attention to uh, are the, the ones down below. The, the Romanized sounds, also the Chinese characters, if you're able to do that. And today, I can use our Dharma instruments to help us invoke the Avatamsaka assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So let's do that. Namo to put this text at page 17. Uh, yeah. And the other, we have two copies of our text because we're going to be going back and forth. We're going to start here with that verse and here's what I plan to do today um, 
we have a goal, which is to understand the 12 links as the Buddha wanted us to understand. That's the part of the Avatamsaka Sutra we're in. Sixth ground talks about uh, the Buddha's uh, understanding of creation. And what what is he talking about? He's talking about the creation of suffering, not just worlds. Worlds come about as a result of deeds. So he's talking about where deeds come from, where karma comes from, which often results in unsatisfying uh, conclusions. And the results don't satisfy often. And so the Buddha talked about how that happened. And his description required a complex, really complex, a lot of moving parts, um, complex explanation of what he called the 12 links of conditioned co-production, conditioned arising. Things pull each other. And it all comes up together. And being um, uh, also a story about liberation, he talked about how that can stop, how we can make that process stop if we're skillful. So that's what we're about. And we're talking about the verses. And so a lot of, um, it requires a lot of things to be set up. You have to have pieces have a foundation, have the rebar, and have the, the studs and the, the uh, framing and, and the ties, and it all has to be code. And then you put the wallboard on and you, you, you know, fill in, put the roof and the shingles, and you've got a house. So we're down inside the walls talking about how it's built. That's really a good analogy. I suppose um, if you're a uh, a contractor, if you're a house carpenter, when you look at a house, you must see something different than most of us see. Right? A house carpenter probably looks at a house and thinks, oh, yeah, uh -huh. 18 inch centers between the two by fours. And uh, that's probably, that's, they were still using clay pipes back then, not PVC pipes, you know, where the, where the liquids flow through. And, I wonder if that's up to code. You know, the contractor can see all those things. That to us we see, oh, big house, you know, big. Oh, that one's brown. Oh, shingles. You know, that's what we see. We see the skin. A contractor goes right into the bones of the house. Ordinary people who are not interested in wisdom look at things that go wrong and they say things like, "What? Bad luck." Calme, you know, bummer. Or we blame somebody. Obama's fault. Anything that goes wrong, right? So that's not only looking at the surface, it's reacting to what goes on and making, having an emotional response to it. The Buddha's wisdom, and it, make no mistake, in this chapter, we're looking through the Buddha's eyes. That's what's so neat about sutras, is they give us, for the time we're looking, we get a chance to look through the Buddha's vision at the way he sees the world. And Buddha's vision here says, we're going to pull aside the paint and the stucco and the shingles and the siding. We're going to look at how the house is standing, how it was made, and see if we can't understand how to... How to uh, direct our karma so that when things go wrong, we don't just say, eh, do me, bummer, bad luck. We go, oh, we'll fix that. I see, I see what's going on. Okay, so that's the idea. That's what we're about. Here it is. Let us, oh. I've only got my mouse here, so. There, uh, can we make it bigger by one? Let's see how does this work? Um, Apple changed their uh, scroll bars at one point, and it was not an improvement. Okay, I'll try again. Uh, yes, did it. Okay, here we go. Ready? Palms together, please. Here we go. Um, let's we can read together, right? Instead of one after. Usually, when I'm there, I can hear you, but there's I'm in Australia, you're in California, and around, so there's a gap. So let's do it. Listen. Here we go. Get it? Wu Ming Yu Xing Wei Guo Xu. 
智于受，现在转，爱取有生，未来苦，观待若断，焉寂静。So here, here, yes, starting here, we can read the English together. Here we go, ready? Ignorance and activities pertain to what is past. Consciousness up to feeling happen in the present. Love grasping an existence cause suffering in the future. If the conditioning and linking process cease, boundaries of past, present, and future dissolve. Okay, well that's a big improvement. This comes from friends who have been working uh, on our translation. This is not the translation in your document that you have which tends to be, there, there's our scroll bar. Uh, come back here. There we go. Uh, this was the original that you just, you saw. Um, what I read you on the screen, we're using the benefit of having the document on our, on our computer while everybody's looking. So this was the original. Observing, waiting, severance of suffering brings their boundaries to an end. No. If the conditioning and linking process cease, the boundaries of past, present, and future dissolve. How about that? That's interesting. So, um, this is a verse. Wu Ming Yu Xing Wei Guo Qi. Ignorance and activities talk about what is past. Twelve links. First link. Second link. Ah, that's what's going on here. Gee, we need to decode this, right? Otherwise. The Buddha is talking about what the Buddha has show, is showing us the process by which we suffer and die and come back again and suffer and die and come back again. Okay. Shi zhi yu shou. Consciousness and feeling, all the way to feeling, that's series of links, are present. This is what goes on. I chu yu sheng wei lai ku. Those links are suffering in the future and the conclusion, if the conditioning and linking process cease, guan dai, those two things, ro duan, if they stop, boundaries of the past, present, and future are over. You have put an end to suffering. Okay? How about that? Now, this document is very interesting because it takes us back to the prose section which preceded this earlier. We were here about, what, six months ago, seven months ago when we got to the prose. Furthermore, ignorance conditioning mental formations is contemplation of the past. Consciousness up to and including feeling is contemplation of the present. Love up to and including existence is contemplation of the future. After that, the 12 links continue to cycle through. The contemplation of when ignorance ends and middle formations ends is the contemplation of how this linking process can cease. So, don't quit, don't quit. This, this does make sense. The Buddha is essentially saying, here's how suffering can end. That's a big deal. All of his suffering for six years alone in confusion, in, in uncertainty, not confusion, the uncertainty that the Buddha felt out in the woods, thinking, am I just an idiot? Did I, should I have my head examined? Should I just go back with my cousins who came out to try to drag me back? Or should I stick with it? This is the, answer, the final answer to his question. He got what he came for. With this, he learned how suffering puts suffering comes to an end. Okay, that's what it is. Now, if people want to, um, there is 
of course, we're re-translating. We're translating again. We're take, taking another look at this. Um, I'm not going to make this, try to make this relevant in contemporary uh, situations, which is usually what, what we do, and I'm explaining why. Because for the very same reason that I haven't lectured on Prajna texts in all my you know, years of lecturing on sutras, because it takes some pretty profound samadhi to get this to where it connects completely with our state. And honestly, I'm not there. So what I want to do is point to it and say, those of you who want to drink deeply of the Buddha's wisdom, particularly regarding emptiness, please come back and work on this because it rewards you. Here's the Chinese. This is the real stuff. This, this is wisdom past the surface. Okay. Um, ignorance and activities talk about what was past. That's the links. Consciousness up to feeling happened in the present. Love grasping and existence cause or bring about suffering in the future. If the condition and linking process cease, the boundaries of past, present, and future dissolve. We'll, we'll mention this one. What does that mean? If the conditioning and linking process cease, where do you do that? You start with ignorance. That's where it ends. You, you bring light to what is dark, and then you see. All right. Um, one more analogy of why we can do this and not think it's just too futile. Okay, I am holding in my hand Exhibit A. Here is a smartphone. This happens to be a smartphone, right? And you all have something similar, probably, good chance you have something similar in your possession. And smartphones, depending on how smart they are, are equipped with multiple mm, radios, can you say? Receivers, if we say safe. Multiple receivers. Um, a standard, let's say, well-equipped smartphone will have GPS, it'll have Bluetooth, it will have Wi-Fi, it will have cellular. Um, any others that leave any out? Shortwave? Uh, a standard cell phone, a smartphone, will be equipped to receive all those waves moving through the air. The question is, where are those waves? And the answer is, we've got a handful of them right here. Here they are. We've got a bunch of them. A lot of them. They're, they're, you know, don't see them, right? But all you have to do is push the button, and up comes the signal. Where were those waves? They were right there all along. And if you don't believe it, turn the phone on, and when it rings, pick it up and answer. Your, that you've just proved the existence of these invisible things working just fine, thank you very much, through empty space. They are the guests of empty space. And if at all, if you pay your phone bill, you can catch the phone signal. Okay, in the same way, here comes the analogy part, right? Likewise, we have these invisible things working in our lives right now. You could say our radios, in a way, are tuned in to pick up the broadcast of karma that we have created ourselves, body, mouth, and mind behavior, that tugs through these links. You can't see them, but they're working. And we take the Buddha's word for it, the sutra's word for it. Um, the promise is that once you, uh, you or I or anyone, um, get the requisite stillness of samadhi, we can actually experience it and see it. It's not that the Buddha is the only person who said this is true. People 
from 2,500 years ago who uh, break that ignorance, who pull, who mean, right? Who actually wake wake up, bring the light in, say, oh, guess what? We've got all these functions happening in school. It's really working that way. That's how it works. So have you ever seen on like Gizmodo or any of those websites when uh, a new phone is issued and, and uh, the geeks will tear it apart and sh explode it and show you every part. You can see the how big the new camera is inside your smartphone and where they put the battery and all. The sixth ground is that. It's that exploded view. Of course, it's just a picture of it. It's not the thing. The thing is working right this minute. That's the other kicker about this, which is it's really happening. The Buddha is telling us something that we're using right this minute to talk about what it is. Just astounding if you see it that way. Okay. Moving on. Any comments? Any questions about? We will go to the next one. Here it is right there. Okay. I'm going to read it. Join me if you care to in unison. Here we go. Wu Ming Wei Yuan Shi Sheng Fu Yu Yuan De Li Fu Nai Jin Chong Yin Shang Guo Li Zi Duan Guan Cha Yu Zi Zhi Xing Kong. Good. Try to scroll. It's a challenge. Here we go. Pardon the translation. It's an early translation. We'll take a look at this and then go to the new translation. With ignorance conditioning, there is production of fetters. When free of that condition, the fetters also end. Freedom brings the severance of retribution born from causes. Contemplating this, one knows its emptiness of nature. Or, in other words, there. With ignorance, Wu Ming Wei Yuan, when ignorance is the primary, is the first condition, fetters come about. Stop that. Fetters come about. Fetters happen. That's real English, right? Fetters are born. Fetters come about. Okay? But when Yu Yuan De Li, when free of that condition, okay, we can accept that. Fetters also end. Good. Simple, clear, good. Song Yin Shang Guo. Li Zi Duan. Freedom brings, freedom's talking about Li, when that condition, meaning you've broken ignorance, freedom brings the severance of retribution born from causes. That's just such a. Uh, is there a way to lighten that sentence up? Let's see here. Chong Yin Shang Guo. Free of that condition. Once free, um, retribution born from causes, cause and effect, effect, let's see, here, let's just talk about cause and effect. Once free, cause and effect. 
stop. That does that can't be right. No, cause and effect doesn't stop. Uh, try again. Once free. Okay, we're going to look at the pros here. Futsu. Moreover, ignorance conditioning mental formations means the cause and condition of brand mental means that once you're free of ignorance and no further form mental formations, that's the what? The fourth skanda. The fourth skanda. The rest of the links work the same way. Okay, so ignorance. Retribution born from causes. Anybody want to suggest a better way to translate this? Jin Chuan, sure you want to get on this? Once free, so retribution, once free, ign retribution that comes from results that come from causes Duan, are stopped, then stop. Okay? Comma here. And con contemplating this, one knows its emptiness of nature. That's not English. That's not the way we say it. Guan Cha, contemplating this, one knows its nature is empty. The nature of this process is empty. Okay, that's the big revelation at the end of almost every prose section, which um, I pointed to last week, which is what? The Buddha says, yeah, there's all kinds of suffering that comes from letting the links roll, roll on. And as soon as you stop them, suffering ends. You know what? There's nobody there. There's nobody home, so to speak. That's, that's the great revelation every time, which is so cool because you, you know, you think about it and what the Buddha is saying is, and so we go through this in vain, right? This is all you could say voluntary. Suffering is voluntary. If you're ignorant of what's going on, no, it's not. Suffering is inevitable. You've got no choice. But as soon as you see what's going on, you go, oh, hey, I can do something about that. Right? So, when ignorance is the first condition, primary condition, fetters come about, right, because you don't see. When that condition ends, the fetters stop. What are fetters? Things that tie you up. Fetters is a, you know, handcuffs are fetters. Ties, wrist ties are fetters. Uh, in the old cowboy movies, so they would tie the bandit to the chair. The stagecoach robber would be tied to the chair with rope. Right? It's a fetter. So that's a fool. When you're free of ignorance, results that come from causes, then stop. When you see that, you understand that it's just a process. There's nobody, there's no God making it that way. That's that's the real under the what the subtext for this whole thing, which is when you compare what the Buddha is saying here to our uh, theological understanding of where it all comes from. The whole edifice of the church trembles if you take it seriously, because this is saying no God needed. Right? No God necessary. You're God free. Creator free. Gods are okay. Devas are fine. No creator who did this to you without your being invited to vote. You get no vote whether you suffer. God is doing it. And you also don't know when you're going to be saved. You wait for grace. That whole structure is becomes its own story, which is fine and legit but it becomes just a story. The Buddha is saying, mm, I don't think so. We do it ourselves. And here's how. And here's how to take charge of it. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. Got it? Question? Any, any insight here to share? I was thinking one thing about the uh, making the 12 links more uh, relevant, um, but this actually relates to the last verse. I was just thinking about uh, how that last verse talked about the boundaries of past, present, and future, and that the, um, the present was basically from uh, co consciousness to feeling is the results in the present, and then we say love mm -hmm. and existence are causes of the present. I don't know if we have that. Okay. And so um, I think, as you were saying, the getting all the way back to that initial ignorance is probably beyond most of us. But the place, I think, where we can apply our energy is actually at the place of love, grasping, and existence. So I think the 12 links gives us actually some instruction in the sense that what comes to us that's happening to us in the present is basically seeds we planted in the past, basically it's ignorance and activities. And so we're experiencing our consciousness all the way to the actual feeling we're having of, of what we're experiencing. And then so that's something that's already happening to us. We have no way to control that uh, unless we get all the way back to ignorance. But we do have some control over love, grasping, and existence. And if we can work on that, then we won't bring about suffering in the future. So I think in terms okay. of something that might be more applicable to us now, uh, as living beings without getting all the way back to the ignorance is that that teaching right there is that that middle one love grasping existence I think is something we can all work on and it actually seems very um, logical you can see how from a feeling it's born a craving that's born a grasping that's born this kind of existence this feeling of attachment so mm -hmm. this is a thought okay yeah that makes sense um, what um, when you when you think about why is it like this, right? Why is my life like this? Why why are things going wrong now? Let's say, for example, if you got a, a lot of burdens, a lot of obstacles, things aren't working out. Why is it this way? Uh, one answer is, is it retrograde Mercury? You know, you check the chart to see if it's, then you can blame that, and that's a really handy scapegoat for a lot of trouble. Okay, no, it's not. Oh, shoot. Now i got to look elsewhere. One thing to think about is there is karma, and that word is so misunderstood. What is karma? Karma is the way I did it before, past. What happens when you do it one way? We tend to repeat. We tend to get habituated. It's really easy. I was reading the other day how many times I'm going to sneeze here. Excuse me. The um, behaviorologists and all, uh, uh, behaviorists, psychotherapists who do you know behavioral behavior mod and all. Um, have these theories about how many times you have to repeat an action to be, make it a habit. And they actually measure the firing of nerve synapses. Uh, perfect example, perfect example. Century old banjo. <laughs> There's a drop thumb technique, okay? You go. To the second string. Okay, to learn that took me about six months. You can see I'm still, I have to warm up. To get that 
to where my nerves are firing so that I can do it like three times out of five, right? Without going, oops, no, that's not it. Oops, no, that's not it. Takes a lot, a lot of work. And I, I guarantee that as you age, it takes more work. When you're 18, when you're 16, it's so much easier somehow. I don't know. Um, but just to do something as simple as dropping your thumb down to the second string instead of the fifth string requires going not, not, not you know, you have to, it's, it's physical labor. And that is Wu Ming Yuan Xing. Okay? From ignorance to activities. And once you get it, it's like, oh yeah, sure, I can do it. Dung, 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 like that. And I've learned that. And so there's an activity. We tend to get habituated to stuff over time. And if there are other chemical issues, like uh, crack cocaine is supposed to be horribly addictive, because it f goes in and fuses your brain cells in new ways. So that's another story entirely. But ignorance and activities talk about what's past. We don't know why, but simple example, ice cream tastes really sweet. People, almost everybody loves ice cream. If you ever watch kids taste ice cream for the first time, something lights up. You know? And we want that again. We want that sensation. So ignorance to activities, the tongue licking the sugar and the cold and the sweet, it's like that happens. When So that's one moving part in this process is habit. Once the habit is established, it's you have to exert, this is what the behavior mod people, to get a new habit, to change it, you have to do it X number of times. Okay. So when we think, I'm going to end, I'm going to break the 12 links power over me, the past is there pulling, exerting its strength, linking and tugging us into the same old behavior. We might say, boy, I'm going to change a bad habit. I really want to change. I'm con convinced I shouldn't do the things that way anymore. I should change. How do we go from ignorance and activities to love grasping existence, suffering in the future, to, let's see, that's not right. How do we go from karma to resolve to new behavior? That's the challenge. And words come in like inspiration, um, Determination, um, vigor, you know, application. Those are the words that you think about when you think, yeah, I really am going to change. Um, so that's right there that this is, we have, we have the pull of habit is karma. Okay. Now, I just want to say a side note. How different is that, my explanation that I just gave you, from fate? It's just fated. Can't break it. Something made me do it. Something else. Doesn't stand. Right? It's not fate. It's your habit. It feels powerful, but in fact, we can break it by exerting new effort. How many times do we have to repeat, 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 repeat before it changes? Jin Chuan, do you want to respond to that? Is that? How does that work in terms of past to present to future? Yeah, I think that was very helpful in terms of just as an example that basically we actually have an opportunity to change our, our lives and the 12 condition links uh, gives a very... Um, at least for me, it's a very logical way of explaining everything that's actually happening. You can actually uh, observe your actions and use the 12 condition things and say, oh, this is how I came to be where I'm at now. And, um, and you can, so for instance, if I have a, a craving, I go, okay, so I had a feeling before that. What was that feeling? Okay, where did that come from? Well, that came from my six senses touching uh, from contact and then my six senses 
coming into contact with something, then I had that feeling. Okay, so what do I do about that? And so it's, it's a very satisfying way of understanding who I am and what I'm doing. And then it gives another sense that actually I'm free to then change my habits if I can apply some samadhi. <laughs> that's, that's the trick, <laughs> the changing okay. habit. Okay. All right. Moving forward. Same story. Nobody's home. The process itself is the process. There is no one actually there to um, guide or mastermind this tug, this, this train towards suffering. It's on the track. Okay, next. Uh, let's do our formal thing so we know where we are. Hey, look the first time. Okay, here it is right here. This guy, let's see, boost it up a bit. What's going to happen here? Oh, there we are. Okay, ready? I'm going to read with everybody. Here we go. Sui Shun Wu Ming. Chi Zhu Yo Ruo Bu Sui Shun Zhu Yo Duan Si Yo Yi Yo Wu Yi Ran Shi Zhong Si Wei Xin Li Zhao Zuo Shi Zhu would say Li Zhao Okay, what does our let's see here let's read it down our original translation if one follows ignorance, all existences arise. If one doesn't follow ignorance, existences are severed. This existing, that exists, or doesn't, works the same. Through ten kinds of thoughts, the mind leaves all attachments. Sui shun, wu ming, qi ju yo. Yo here doesn't mean have. Usually the word yo would mean to have yo meo in Mandarin. Here it's talking about existences. It's a technical term. There are 25 kinds of existences, including humanity, human, the human the Dharma realm of humans. That's a yo, right? Okay, uh, to learn more about that, the Sharangama Sutra is the place to look. Um, it includes such things as the realm of. Um, we used to say immortals for Xian. What do, what do we say now? What's the Sharangama? Rishis? Ascetic cultivators? I think they, they translate it ascetic masters. Ascetic masters, right. That's an actual one of the existences. A Xian. Um, the, the Chinese word is human with a mountain. So mountain man. A Xian. Is that like a Bigfoot? No. No. But equally rare. right? Probably... Um, well, the they existence of Xian has been a part of Xianren. Tian Xian, uh, immortals, we would say, in, in the past, but ascetic uh, adept, ascetic cultivators. Um, you can imagine somebody hanging out in the Rockies, you know, in the uh, Canadian Rockies, have a Canadian immortal up there. Very polite thing. Cold, eh? Yeah. So, if one follows ignorance, all the existences arise. In other words, creation. How does creation happen? Because we, Suishun Wumi, we just bump along, taking it as it comes, chilling, grooving, whatever, dude. That's ignorance. It's like, in other words, karma, habit is in complete control. But if you don't just go along with whatever dude, then all those existences can suddenly stop. And why is that a good thing? Well, because coming into being includes going out of being, which nobody wants. Pain, misery, suffering, the blues. Okay, line three, here it is. This exists, that exists. 
this doesn't exist, that won't exist. If we, so with this, you get this. When that's not there, it's also the same. In other words, you don't get that. So this is just beautiful. Look at how beautiful the Chinese verse is. This exists, that exists. That balance, meaning linking one to the other. When you get this, you get this. When you lack this, you also lack that. So the whole philosophy is expressed there in seven characters. Beautiful. Through ten kinds of contemplations, the mind leaves all attachments behind. Okay. The rest of the links work in the same way. Okay. Now, this is this one is profoundly terse. This one merits its own uh, explanation. We're going to look at it here. Oops. There we go. Okay, it's this one right here. So if people want to recite with me. Yo zhi xiang shu yi xin shi si ye wu yi qi san dao san ji san ku yin yuan sheng qi fu qi mie shun wu jin. Oh boy. This is as terse as it gets. This is totally telegraph. This is a telegraphic uh, dharma. Dharma expressed like a telegram. Uh, I need just another inch of text there, please. I'm trying to slide my fingers across the top of my mouse to do the... Uh -huh. Okay, because the silly scroll bars are not... Okay, try again. Through such, there we go, through such universal contemplation or arising from conditions as without doer or receiver or actuality, like illusions, uh, I'm in the wrong one, sorry, 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 right here, there it is. As continuing limbs of existence, as containment in one thought, as individual karma, not letting go, and the three roads, as three boundaries, three sufferings, as production due to causes, as bonds and fetters rise and fall, and as according, ending. <laughs> so that's obviously, I think that's pretty clear that that is shorthand, right? Shorthand. You're just looking at uh, the, the translator giving you pointers. Look at this. Here is the... That's one line of the, t the prose. That's the second line of the prose. There's the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth line. So you can see how telegraphic and terse, telegrammatic. Anybody get a telegram? When was the last time anybody, I'm curious, anybody on ever get a telegram? Anybody? Telegram's not, right? Funny, huh? Telegrams are just not not the thing anymore. They're, I um, when was the last time I saw um, a telegram when we were putting together the um, show of Master Xuanhua's connection with Master Empty Cloud, Xu Yun, Lao Hushan, right, our Grand Master. Um, when Master Empty Cloud passed away, 1959, Shifu in Hong Kong sent a telegram to the Buddhist lecture hall, um, I believe, or the uh, its earlier incarnation in San Francisco to uh, Stella, Stella Tam. Uh, Shifu had not come to America yet. But his disciples were already here. I think Stella was a student at Berkeley at that point. She had organized a, uh, a Buddhist group. And the telegram said, um, Master Empty Cloud has passed away. Um, while I'm telling you about this, why don't we 
actually show you. Better to show than tell. Right? Um, it's uh, the point of the telegram is that um, here we go, right there. We'll bring that up. I'll show you what a telegram looks like. Um, the point is, telegram went by code. The um, you could convey messages without speaking, without voices. Um, you used it. Did 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 did. Dot, 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 dit, dit, dot, dit, 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 short and long dits on a key. It was just an electrical connection and breaking the connection. And that would, you could, uh, if you knew Morse code, that would be enough to show you what the sender of the telegram wants to say. Now, we need to move, this would be fascinating for people who haven't seen this yet. Uh, so we're not going to go through it. This would take a lot of time. That's for another day. It's a wonderful slideshow, including interviews of Master Ban Huan in Shenzhen, uh, having him tell us about when he was there. Here's Madalena. Here's Guo Guo Ku, Hang Liu, our Master Liu, Hang Bin, Hang Zhang, myself, Master Yin Shun, who's the new abbot there. So. There's lots and lots and lots of stories here. Here is the uh, transmission scroll that gave the Dharma from Master to Cloud to our teacher. Here's the verse that uh, this is. I'm not. I'm just not trying to tease you here, but uh, this is the uh, the bay on Master. Uh, this is the uh, Weiyang schools. Uh, Shulita, the Sharira Pagoda for Old Master Wei of Mount the Wei Shan Lao Ren, the elder of Master of Mount Wei. Here is Shi Fu's name. Uh, let's see, how does it go? Shu Lao, Master Empty Cloud, is the eighth generation patriarch. Chuan Xuan Hua Du Lun, transmitting it to Master Xuan Hua Du Lun, and then to Xuan Xuan Sheng Yi uh, of Hong Kong passed away. Xing Fu, Dharma Master, Hai Deng, our very own uh, Master Sha of, of Shaolin Monastery, Hai Deng, Xuan Yun Man Jue, and Ying Xin Yi Cheng, Master Yi Cheng, who recently passed away. Ru Shi, Er, Xu Wei, Weiyang, Zhong Feng. So this is how the Weiyang school is continued. Uh, in Chao Hai Nei, within Within and without, with within the borders of China and outside the borders of China, so that the treasury of the eye of the proper Dharma will sustain, and the light of the lamp will never go out. Okay, cool, huh? So anyway, Master Empty Cloud passed away, and here is a telegram. Are you ready? Shifu sent a telegram to San Francisco saying, this is 1959, October 17. This whole thing here is a telegram. Reverend Xu Yun died this Wednesday. Please arrange commemorations. To Lun. Right? That's Shifu. He sent it to William Leong on Hyde Street from Hong Kong. So there you go. This is Western Union, you know. That's that's where, how Telegram, they were set up. So they had the wires. So you need the wires and you need a key that can go tap, short, tap, long, short, long, short, long. Dit, 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 da, 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 dit, 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 S, O, S, save our ship. So here's a Telegram. That, that whole illustration of Telegram. Now, the application of this 
to our text starts with um, there we go the way it goes we have this this is telegrammatic like a telegram these links are being discussed in a verse in a Chinese verse how amazing that a verse can contain so much information all right got it Thank you, Dharma Master. That was really long illustration, Dharma Master. Well, I had my computer, right? I just thought you might want to see it too. So, as continuing limbs of existence, as containment, okay, as continuing links, limbs of existence, yōzhi, in other words, creation happening, contained in a single thought, oh boy, one thought contains all 12 links. As individual karma, ziye, umi, not letting go, and the three roads of mm, suffering, right? Sanji, the three boundaries, three kinds of suffering, born of conditions and causes. Bonds and fetters rise and go away. We accord endlessly. We flow along endlessly. So this is the story of suffering. And it's so elegant to put it into a single verse this way that we've got um, the, whole, the whole story of creation, according to the Buddha, using through the lens of the 12 links is contained in this one verse. Okay? Shun, Wu, Jin, that flowing, that running downstream, can't be stopped. It never stops until you stop it. But the continuity of those links, the branches of existence, is what makes us hurt. You can take a Panadol, you can take a Tylenol, but the relief is only temporary. Talk, 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 talking so much. Any responses? Is it like, yeah, following? Ten thoughts. A tenfold back and forth cycle of Pratitya Samutpada. These are the ten thoughts mentioned above. Through what are they? Here's the prose. Page twenty. I'll show you just so you can follow. Here's our text, page 16, going to page 20, page 18, page 20. Here it is. These are 10 kinds of opposing and according contemplations of how the, the links come and go. Okay, why? All right, let me explain this. Okay, this is the Avatamsaka Sutra. And our Avatamsaka Sutra, here's an entire chapter where the Buddha is laying out one single Dharma. Okay, he's talking about the 12 links. And Ajahn Sumedho is famous for explaining. Four, four Noble Truths in many, many, many varieties. Right? Ajahn Sumedho, Lumpur Sumedho, the elder monk, senior American monastic, is famous for talking about distress, sorrow, pain, discomfort. Right? He's got all these ways of describing the first noble truth that 
things don't satisfy. Conditioned dharmas fall apart. And our generation of Europeans largely just went, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. Can I leave home and follow you? Can I be your disciple? Right? Ajahn Sumedho's explanation of the Four Noble Truths was immortal. I mean, he was able to bring so many people into the Sangha simply because he spoke that dharma so well. Now, of course, he spoke all kinds of dharma, right? But he was famous for that. That was his expertise. And the his disciples, you know, Ajahn Sudanto and the other younger generation of the Thai forest monks do the same. They take the Four Noble Truths and just explain it, you know, so you get it. You understand that particular dharma very thoroughly. All right. So there is an entire chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra called the Four Noble Truths chapter. Did you know that? Were people aware? We haven't lectured on it, but there's an entire chapter that's devoted entirely to the Four Noble Truths. So you can look it up. Now, this chapter, this piece of this chapter, is devoted entirely to another separate dharma, absolutely, totally, which is 12 links, Pratitya Samadpada. Okay, now, you guys give me a lot of slack. You, you f follow me, you know, because I tell you, we're going here next. And you go, okay, Dharma Master, whatever, whatever you say. You know, if I lead you into the sixth ground, and you're going, oh my God, you know, I don't follow this. What, what are we doing here? I, I came to meditate. Why don't we just meditate? I like to meditate. So, okay, I'm dramatizing, right? But with goodwill and esprit de corps, you all followed me into the sixth ground, 12 links. Here we are. And this is hard stuff, man. It requires samadhi to actually experience it. I honestly don't experience the 12 links. It happens too fast for my coarse, rude state of stillness. Not very still. You have to be still to actually experience this happening. Where is it happening? You can say it's right here, just past your eyes. It's going on somewhere in my DNA, in my, you know, my Dharma body, and my flesh body is going through this process. Okay, that doesn't stop me. I still want to know. I still want to have this. The same way I want to hear about the Sharangama Samadhi. That's for later, right? I want to hear about the ground of happiness, the first ground where fear ends. You get to four kinds of fearlessness, five kinds of fearlessness for later. I don't have it yet. We're into deep bodhisattva water, but I'm still interested, and I want to explain it to the best of my ability. So, so far, probably the analogies that will survive this experience is talking about the Buddha raising the hood on the engine, the car of the universe, and saying, take a look at how the engine's turning. That image works for this, even though many of us are not car mechanics, right? Another example of uh, the, the uh, tech geek websites that explode your phone and show you how the big the battery is. That's an example, too. A carpenter looking through the walls to see the rebar and the, the girders, the two-by-fours. Doctors? I wonder what doctors see. When a doctor looks at a body, do they see past the skin? Do they, does a surgeon, once you're a surgeon, are you changed forever? You can't look at a human the same way again? Do you see the, the, the muscles and their colors and the blood and it's, you know, the pumping heart and all? I wonder. I wonder about that. Dentists, do dentists look at people and only see their smile, you know? I don't know. The Buddha is saying, yeah. Here's how it works. Here's how the universe works. Here's how your life works. And when it goes wrong, here's how it works. And here's the promise that you can make it stop. You can make it make it, the pain go. Okay. That's pretty much my best shot. And other people have explained this in greater depth, with greater subtlety, made bigger connections to it, made it closer to the to our lives. But we're not far from the end of this. And um, I would be thrilled to know that somebody 
has like made this work for them. They, during the work week, during school day, this came back and suddenly they experienced a connection to this notion of linked causes and conditions that bring about the existence of states we experience and there being no entity at the heart of it. That would be wonderful to know that somebody got uh, insight that way. That's the point of this. And if that doesn't happen, then what do we do? We say exposure to this is very helpful because there will be a day in our progress towards liberation from suffering when this will kick in and go, right, the sixth ground, that talks about where stuff comes from, especially my suffering. What are the contemplations that we have back and forth cycles of praticca samutpada, 12 link, condition co-arising, continuity of the 12 links, how they're contained within one thought of the mind, how they're distinct due to your individual blend of karma, how they don't leave one another, that they link correctly always, how the three roads do not stay stray from each other, the past, the present, and the future, how sufferings grow, how causes and conditions arise and cease, the arising and cessation of ties and fetters, and the contemplation of nothing whatsoever and its ultimate cessation. Okay. Okay, here they are. What are the three roads? Disciples of the Buddha. Ignorance here, I Chi Putuan, is the, the road of affliction. Activities through existence, not ceasing, is the road of karma. And the others are the road of suffering. So, three roads, ignorance, karma, and suffering. Misery, dissatisfaction, unsatisfying. And yet, ignorance, karma, and suffering has nowhere to rest if we end ignorance. Once we wake up, we see that it's just like a play. It's like a show. That's kind of amazing. It says, like hollow reeds. Right? It would be, what's it like? It's like a smartphone without Wi-Fi and without a SIM card. There you go. Perfect analogy. Contemporary. Thank you very much. I'm pleased. Yes, yes, yes. I accept your congratulations. It's exactly like a smartphone made dumb. Right? How do you make a smartphone dumb? Remove the SIM card and shut off Wi-Fi. And there you go. It's just like that. It's basically a drink coaster. You know, <laughs> to keep your table from getting a some quite circle on the table. So yeah, hollow reed. Hollow reed is kind of a uh, you know mm, rural. Most of us don't live with hollow reeds in the downtown area of Berkeley, but we can definitely relate to a sim a smartphone without a SIM card and no Wi-Fi. Hubba hubba. Okay. Um, I'm going to take us away from this pursuit right now and move into something I promised that we were going to do three weeks ago, four weeks ago already. And I didn't mean to tease people. It's called decoding the Dharma. And I think this will prove interesting to folks who have been patiently sitting through this description of the 12 links. Um, would you rather do that or would you rather look at pictures of spiders? <laughs> no question, Dharma Master. Spiders. No, no, no. no. Okay. Because I've been, uh, the. it's now high summer here and the spiders have been progressively getting bigger as they do every year. It's just the, every summer the 
the, the bush, the forest here matures, and then it gets cold and they all go away. And uh, in one day, I run into lots of remarkable eight-legged creatures who live here, who are home here, and I suspect they will be here long after the humans are gone. So anyway, let's get on to the coding, the decoding of the Dharma. The, the story goes, and I, I want to say it one more time, um, that here, here's, how my, here's how this came about. Um, we have been, as you know, in DRBA, in the Buddhist Text Translation Society, looking once again at our translations. And our translations, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Master Hua left behind a large, large stack of reel-to-reel -reel vinyl tapes that we made of his lectures, because he lectured so much. He lectured a lot. It was wonderful, his output. So we didn't waste time. I wasn't even there when this effort began. Uh, we started translating. Our Master Chur, our Master Nagshro, the, the Bhikshuni Hung, Hung Yin, Lani Bauer, Bhikshuni Hung Xian, who's still known. Um, they were big parts of this early translation process. And they learned their Chinese as they learned their Dharma. It was They learned to cultivate, they learned to speak Chinese at the same time. And translating is always tough. So our group, and I came along in 73, started translating. We all were learning our Chinese. We were all learning the Dharma at the same time. And our translations um, were what? They were our attempt to understand what Master Hua was giving us. What was Shifu giving us? He was doing something similar to what we were just doing just now, looking at texts. But he would also give Dharma talks, uh, Dharma discourses. Right? He would give. He would explain the Dharma about cultivation and about the Tao and about Bodhi and about Bodhisattvas and all, just all the things that Shifu talked about so much. And the Dharma that he passed on was a traditional set of teachings, largely codified, codified, largely assembled through the Tiantai teachings. The Tiantai is one of the two major Chinese Mahayana Tiaozong teaching schools, where instead of meditating, instead of reciting the Buddha's name, Omi Tofu, Omi Tofu, instead of reciting mantras and mudras and things, and instead of specifically focusing on behavior like the Vinaya school, the teaching school said, what did the Buddha say? What did he say? Did I understand it? And if we understand it, what does it mean? Right? How do we apply it? That's the teaching school. Shurfu was in that line. He got that tradition. And he passed it on to us. Now, the Chinese... Mahayana uh, comes out of Chinese culture, of course, and Chinese culture has some amazing, amazing features in it, such as Chinese language. And Chinese language has been a consistent set of symbols and sounds, phonemes and meaning units, um, for you know, 5,000 years. English on the other hand, is a very, very new language, relatively speaking, hundreds of years. So for thousands of years, people have been using the same set of written symbols and the same set of sounds to, to convey meaning when they talk, when they write. Chinese are historians. They've been writing down what happened in the skies. We have records of, of comets from the Han Dynasty 2,000 years ago. Battles, emperors, poetry, all kinds of things have been written down by the Chinese. We can go back to and, and read them today as if they were happening in the news, you know, today. So the Chinese love wen is the word. Zhong wen. Wen is culture. Wen hua. All right. One of the features of this love for culture is a way of making things essential. The Chinese, Chinese, Zhongwen, Chinese language, um, if you can say it in fewer words, it's better. It lasts longer. You can memorize it better. You can, 
match it with other words to make rhymes and allusions and images and poetry and stuff. So it's a it's a beautiful, uh, priceless aspect of Chinese culture is this ability to write down experience in simple, essential phrases. So Buddhism comes to China, and the Buddhists are really good at this. They come up with four character phrases. Si zi cheng yu, four character idioms. And Shi Fu learned them and passed them on to us intact. We got the real transmission of the Jiao Zong in the 20th century. Okay, so back to us fledgling translators. When those four character phrases came to us, we um, tried our best. First thing we did was look in the dictionary, put the English word that seemed to fit on top of the Chinese word. So we had English words with Chinese syntax, the Chinese word order, and the Chinese logic and grammar. And that was pretty good, first time. But when you try to read it from a standard English perspective, it seems like code. It seems like words that somebody else must know what they mean because at first look, it's quirky, it's funny. Uh, it's not standard, right? It's not idiomatic, it's not colloquial um, in English, in Western culture. All right, but it was translated, and it was the first essential necessary step of bringing it into the culture. So now, after 30 years of that, our Chinese is better, our cultivation is better, our understanding of the Dharma, our bigger picture is better of what Shurfa was trying to do. And some of us are trying to re trying to to root those teachings of the Dharma into the culture more deeply. All right. Had an experience. I was at a Buddhist forum in Wuxi this last October, and the forum topic was Hong Fa, spreading the Dharma. Hong Fa means one thing to Chinese Buddhists. It means something different to Western Buddhists. When I I asked Shifu one day, I said, Shifu, in the future, when I go out to Hong Fa, do you have some advice for me? Shifu said, Neo Fa Ke Hong Ma. Do you have any Dharma to propagate? Meaning, don't give yourselves airs. He would never let us call ourselves a Hong Fa Tuan a Dharma propagation delegation, we would be a Fang Wen Tuan, which means respectfully coming to ask for instruction. Hong Fa means, okay, I'm going to Hong some Fa. You want to sit down and listen? No. I'm going to propagate some Dharma. Surface question, do you have any Dharma to propagate? Meaning, get humble. Don't give your, you know, you're not there yet. You're still wet behind the ears. Okay, so... <laughs> Typical Shifu teaching pulls the rug on, so you don't go. You know, here comes the Dharma propagators. Oh my God! So here I am in the Hong Fa um, assembly in the in the forum. There are lots of monks from lots of abbots from the biggest temples in China. Ling Yan Shan Si was the the, the coordinator. The abbot of Lingyan Shansu and the abbot of, of Jila Si in Harbin. Lingyan Shansu is in Hangzhou, it's the, the largest temple in China, right? And I was the Western language coordinator for, I was the third, you know. Uh, and the, the other, the monk who was with me was uh, Yan Jue Fashi from uh, Guangxi Si in Beijing. So we had, you know, Beijing and, and Harbin and, and Hangzhou. Biggest monasteries. These are these are serious monks, and a professor halfway through says, "Okay, and this is a Chinese professor. Okay, so I want to know," he said. "You Buddhists go on and on and on with these wonderful like Dharma phrases that none of us understand." He says, "I got a PhD." I'm in uh, political science. 
He says, I understand language. I speak Chinese. I'm a Buddhist. I don't understand what you're talking about. When are you going to care enough to try to make sense to me? He says, and everyone's kind of, ah, uh, okay, that's pretty straight, you know. I, I was amazed because that was direct, not polite, right? And in a lot of people tend to be politically correct or politically, like, delicate in a time like this because Chinese don't want to have any embarrassment, you know, wants to go smoothly. So here's this guy saying, hey, I don't understand what you're saying. Why don't you try harder? You miss me unless you just don't care whether we understand or not. And it's like, well, uh, mm -hmm. and there it was. Not only do we find these four character phrases hard to understand, the Chinese themselves. Why? Here's my best shot at it. These four character phrases represent wisdom distilled, smelted down to a, uh, an essence that, can, that is irreducible. It's like the periodic table of elements. Right? When you're down to oxygen, oxygen is a building block. When you're down to these four character phrases, that's a nugget of wisdom given to a container that will carry over, can be memorized, can be remembered, can be passed on, and will, will sustain, will survive. It is not meant to be only repeated. Now here at Gold Coast Dharma Realm, last night we were talking about this topic, as my Dharma talk, and we, came, we got another analogy for it. These four character phrases are like tea leaves. Chinese tea leaves, oolong, not tea bags. Chinese tea leaves that you actually get in your fingers, right? And they're little tiny nurdles, they're little balls of tea. And you put hot water on them and they go and tea. Hot water becomes tea. If you don't douse them with boiling water, it's this dry leaf that looks like a something, a BB, you know. So we who are interested in what the Chinese understood about the Buddha Dharma have to apply the hot water. And then we get tea, which people like. And it's flavorful and it's a good drink and it makes sense and it's you know keeps you awake and it ultimately sets you free. So, what we get in these four character phrases are tea leaves in the pre-tea state. That's, that was last night's image. That's a good image. So, what I thought would be interesting would be to look at the four character phrases and see if we can't apply some hot water. The flavor that comes off them is huge so and delicious. All right. Here's what is a wisdom saying? I, I call it decoding Buddhist idiom. What is a wisdom saying? Short, pithy expressions that carry advice or wisdom. Often advice. Plant your corn early this spring. Thanks, Grandma. During this forum, scholars criticize the Buddhists. We don't understand what you're talking about. It's some abstract, lofty philosophical jargon. We don't get it. Now, it's even more poignant because why? The Buddha said, don't write down my dharma. Once you write it down, it becomes the property of the priest caste, the very, 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 very tiny minority who can read. It becomes theirs because, oh, I know what the Buddha said. It's right here. You want to know? Uh, maybe I won't tell you unless you make it worth my while right? or whatever. So the Buddha said, don't write it down. Keep it in the oral tradition. The Dharma is meant to help people wake up, to end their suffering. That's why I left. So don't write it down. Well, being typical Buddhist disciples, they wrote it down. You know, of course, they were afraid they would forget. So I, we would have done the same. Um, now, where it goes wrong is where we have some people who don't ever apply the hot water. They just say, I got the tea leaf. 
I got the four character phrases, and they rattle them off, and everybody else is like, whoa, 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 don't mess with them. They can hit you with the four character phrases, right? They sound like they know what the Dharma is. That's one zi boro. That's one level of wisdom. Owning the phrases is the first step. But then if you really want to understand what the Buddha taught, you need to unpack them. What do we call these phrases in English? Proverbs, maxims, aphorisms, axioms, adages, saws, tags, mottos, epigrams, dictums, expressions, phrases, formulas, slogans, catchphrases, mantras, platitudes, sometimes, cliches, sometimes, commonplace, truism, chestnuts. Look in English how tuned in we are to little nuggets of wisdom. We have all these words for them. So English doesn't fall short. The, these are ideas here. The idioms carry the tradition in crystals of coded language, terse, reduced as far as possible into a diamond-like essence. But we need to identify that if it's obscure, opaque, exclusive, and distant, it is not the Dharma yet. The Dharma is direct, clear, universal, and inherent. Okay. Okay, Dharma comes to the West, we got to decode the phrases at different levels of English and then give them back to Asian Buddhists, maybe. <laughs> that was a great discovery. The Asian Buddhists are often as mystified as we are. They don't have the decoder ring, Captain Midnight's secret decoder ring. Okay, we worked on this one yesterday. We'll start right here. Let's work with this one. We can keep a list, okay? Any of you uh, list keepers, you archivists and librarians and, and notebook writers, note writers, let's keep a list of the ones that we unpack till we're happy with it. First one we worked on. Okay? Uh, word for word, suffering bitter, ocean, no boundary, turn head is shore. Suffering, ocean, no boundary, turn head is shore. Okay, wuhai wubian huito shuan. Last night we went around the room. We had uh, four nuns, myself, uh, Sam was there, and some lay people, three laymen, a couple, and we said, what does it mean? Interestingly enough, Jin Fu said, this phrase has come out of Buddhism into Chinese culture. And what it means is, in Chinese culture, if you apply this, right? Alan, think about it. Have you heard people apply this? To mean, change your life. Yeah, actually, people use that fairly often. You can probably even see the news today because of the election. <laughs> how how would you how would you translate it in in if somebody if your mother said this to you with her finger in the air, what what is she saying to you? Can you um, put it into idiomatic? Um, I can elaborate a little bit. It's not kind of try to shorten it. For example, is it kind of implies that. I'm heading to the wrong direction, so I better turn around. So that's a that's a meaning behind. So I'm kind of okay. Yeah. Okay, before it's too late, right? Okay. Anybody want to correct that, change that, add to it? What does that mean, Yuan? What is if somebody says to you, "Who I will be on way to Shiran"? Yeah, I kind of agree Ellen's approach. I think the key word uh, in this Cheng Yu, in this uh, in this line is the character Hui. Uh, the mm -hmm. Hui is the focal point for, for this phrase. So return, as long as you return, um, turn your head and there's a medicine, there's a um, okay. you know, proper path. Okay, cool. Anybody else? When when uh, Jin Fu said change your life, uh, 
uh, or you know stop that you're, you're going the wrong way the uh, Aussie friend who was there last night had a strong reaction he said this is boy there's so much judgment in that I really am uncomfortable with people being so critical and judgmental of me uh, he said the Chinese do that a lot you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay. uh, and that was it you know it's a very Western uh, response to to what could be good advice you know Tim Testu the former Hung Ju said he had a uh, he was I believe he went to school in a Catholic high school and he had a priest who said son you're heading for the shoals meaning his ship is gonna run aground on the rocks meaning you better stop your drinking and carousing that was before he became a son you're heading for the shoals who I will be in way to anybody else last night all the nuns took a turn at explaining Kuhai will be in way to no end to the misery out there however the shore that you're looking for okay my interpretation is where is the end of suffering and in the Buddhist sense not the common Chinese culture sense what it's saying is that if you understand the mind ground all you have to do is cultivate right here and in, even though the ocean of suffering is vast and boundless just by recognizing where the 12 links turn you find dry ground under your feet you're saved you're not going to drown it's an exhortation to cultivate the mind ground right you don't have to go out anywhere this is a non theistic this is not a deist it's not, there's no God in this phrase right it's not uh, uh, what Chou uh, Shan Shi'an, right? Pray to God is the other shore. No, it's you right where you are. Find the mind ground and work here, and you're you got it. You're there. I think that that would be my interpretation. So something like the mind is the place where suffering can end, where endless, where limitless. The mind is the place where limitless suffering can end. That would be my translation of Kuhai Wu Bien Hui To Shirvan. Now, notice I don't have anything about suffering C in my translation, but my emphasis is entirely on this on. Where is salvation? Where is liberation? Where is freedom from suffering? Is you don't move a dead burned inch, you stay right there but you find your mind and poor wuming you break up ignorance by understanding and you made it okay there's one yes any comments Chin Chuan Chin Shen David anybody want to dive in here I'm also thinking about how to translate it so mm -hmm. I, I, I like the, what you said about right here is dry ground. So I was thinking something like uh, the ocean. Uh, so I was, actually, this is not, not using that, but something like suffering seems endless, but if you just look inside, you'll find a way out. But if you want, if we would like to. Say again, but if yeah. you look inside. But if you look in, if you just look inside, if you just turn inside, you'll see, you'll find a way out. But I, I like the metaphor with the ocean. So if you, if you're something like the ocean of suffering, seems endless, but if you just turn inside, you'll find uh, dry ground right where you are, or dry, dry ground. I 
you like, now, now that we're unpacking it, actually, it's, it's a very profound principle because I think you if we do look outside, oftentimes, you know, you just see like, wow, this is endless. My suffering is endless. This is, well, what can I do? And then you just give up. Yeah. But if you just turn the lens inward, then you actually find maybe a solution. Okay, one important dynamic of this phrase is that your body doesn't have to move. That's, that's important. That's the Buddhist part of it. It's not outside. It's not in a magic person who's got psychic power, no matter how marvelous he seems. Right? That would not be on. That's not safe ground. It's not die ground in the middle of the suffering ocean. That's just more deep water. You're still treading water if you put it, the power in some person. Because why? That person is a creation of links pulling along. He's in process too. You want to find something that is no longer being pulled along from ignorance to activities to consciousness to human form. And that would be the Dharma and your mind. Yeah, so that, that's one, I think, the, the power points of this. It's not out in God. So this is really a Buddhist phrase, but it's, you know, it's, it's our story. This is not the story that a lot of people resonate with. Okay, think about it. Moving on. Ha, ha, ha. Check it out. Duan yu chu ai. This phrase probably has more to, uh, has done more to chase away potential Buddhists than almost any other. I don't want to cut anything off. I like to meditate. I thought I was going to come and get peaceful, and you want me to cut stuff off? Mm. And what am I cutting off? Love. Ah, let's go get baptized. I'd much rather be a Christian. Christians don't. You have to get rid of love. There's a trouble here, right? This is a hard one. Okay, I've, I've took my hand by giving you earth, last night's translation. We looked at these two phrases. Last night. Go on, you two. I, but there's one more, too. So, cut off desire, duan, sever. That was being translated as sever in our translations today. Sever desire. Chu, get rid of, banish. I, love. Oh, my God. Who wants to do that? On YouTube, I. Um, uh, Jin Fusher last night said this is entirely within Buddhism. This phrase has not made it into Chinese culture. As many Chinese are scared of this as as Western. Okay, this is really uncomfortable. This one. Yao Duan Yu Chu I. Trevor would say, and we would all go. Is it going to be bloody? Any thoughts on it? Okay. Last week, we had some wisdom on the floor about this. One of the problems is, what does this word mean? Love. In the West, love is not, in, in our Western culture, love is the highest good. Love is something we're all hoping to find forever and forever, you and me, baby. You know. And all the romances, all of Hollywood, all of the novels, all the soap operas are based on the notion that this is achievable. What are we talking about? Eros, that kind of love between men and women. That is not the only kind of love. Romantic love between, let's say, two people. It need not be gendered, okay? Berkeley, California. So this is eros. Romantic love between two or more people, okay? Um, now, what about Christian, the love the Christians extol and exalt and are offended when the Buddhists say cast off love. That is agape. Agape is a selfless love 
that Jesus said feels for all people. Um, how self? How do we translate agape? Selfless, broad, based, um, inclusive, affection. Um, affection doesn't seem strong enough, does it? Love. Okay. But in English, it's the same four letters: L O V E. Okay. What about love between mother and daughter, father and son, mother and son, father and daughter? Philios, another kind of love. Okay. Oh boy, look at that. Suddenly, this is deeper and richer, and it's, this becomes murkier. Now, last week, we heard about craving. Craving, which would be probably a much better translation for I, in this case, from what for what the Buddha was talking about when this phrase came about. Um, we couldn't, um, one of the efforts, I know uh, Alan and, and Ihuan and YC in our community went back and tried to find the earliest occurrence, tried to source these words. Who, where did this come from? Is Duan Yu Chu I a phrase that occurs in sutras? Is it a phrase that occurs in Dharma talks, in, you know, what did some monk say this first? That's helpful when you're sourcing these to know who said it first. Sutra text quotes are different. So craving attachment, if we plug this into the 12 links, this is link number, what? Eight, right? From craving, from grasping comes love, from grasping comes craving, from craving comes existence, from existence comes birth, from birth comes death, from death comes old age, from suffering and, and all, right? So it's in the 12 links. So it fits right in with today's lecture. So let go of attachments. Don't, if, now, what if we translated it as stop running outside after externals and let go of your attachments. Then this becomes wise instructions for cultivation. You, what is you? Desire things that you think, things that are outside you that you think if you get them will make you happy. The Buddha would say, don't do that. That's where suffering happens. When you are pursuing externals, you're going to hurt because the you that wants are both nobody home. They're wrong views, illusions. Furthermore, drop attachment. They won't, once you get it, you won't be happy. What about stop running outside after external things and let go of your attachments as a translation for Tuan Yu Chu Ai. Jin Chuan, you want to weigh in here with, with craving and what your comments from last week? I, yeah, I think that's a very good explanation, like a kind of what do you call it, um, unpacking the, the, the quote. Um, if we want to maybe be more specific, it would be something like, don't, st don't stop following your cravings and uh, let go of your attachments. I actually think using attachments for I is actually a very, uh, what, actually is very appropriate. Because I was always trying to figure out why you and what, what I is. And usually they point to the same thing as craving. But I often you can think of something that you've already got. So it's pointing to the right. second move of the, uh, the 12 condition links. You have the, the craving and then the, the grasping. The is still happening here. 
it's yeah. still like something rises. Ooh, I think that'd yeah. be great. I means you've already moved. So that's actually really good. So it's the stopping of that craving and then the letting go of the attachments. And if you do that, then our suffering will end. Because just today's lecture I was talking about that that's the seeds for future suffering. Right. Yeah. Anybody else want to look at this? Suddenly there's fewer bloody limbs on the floor, right? Cut off desire, cast out love. You don't like the person who says that. You don't want to be the... Who says? Fashik, could we try... Yes. Could we could we, could we uh, render you as a liking? Because if we look at this character in uh, its original uh, uh, meaning, you can see on the right side is the it's the liking, and our liking is as deep as the valley. the The left side is the valley, so the desire come from our liking is as deep as the valley. So. What if we translate this character as lacking? So if we could stop, oh, seize okay. our lacking, the, the lacking. Okay. People, uh, Yihuan is doing a character analysis, something that's really fun to do. Uh, number six. You see that? That's the right side of the character Yu right there. If we cut it up is chin and it's lacking. The left side is valley. Okay, so you take Gu and put it there, and although we can't break the gap, you've got Yu. So lacking a valley, <laughs> well, you got a mountain or a plain. Right? Uh, yeah, stopping lacking. Um, that's not the way I would say it to make sense in English. I would say, be aware of, be aware of how that sense of deficiency pulls you outside. You sense, you seem to be, I, I would say the illusion of lacking, the illusion of being deficient. We were not deficient. The Buddhist message was, Every living being has the Buddha nature. It all can become Buddhas. Nobody lacks it. But because we're taught that we are not enough, we're taught that girls don't do science. We're taught that, you know, guys can't cook or can't raise kids, stay home dads, you know, this kind of thing. That's conditioning. That's cultural conditioning. And we, we learn that we're deficient. Tell a child that they can't be an astronaut, boy or girl, doesn't matter. They're, they're like, why not? Sure I can. Well, you're a girl. Well, what's the difference? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I would say the illusion of the, il oh, here we go. I would say the illusion, oops, here we go. The illusion of deficiency, something like that. You want? Would you accept that instead of lacking? Lacking doesn't quite make sense. Better. Yeah. You've uh, break through that illusion that you somehow don't have what it takes because we do. Alan wants the mic. So this uh, yu, right, is like, um, how should I say? I think Fashi mentioned that earlier, just something can never hit the right spot, right? Is that kind of end of this third? Cannot, yeah, can never Doesn't be filled up. Yeah, that is the yu. It's not really just the desire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, desire is just the one translation of yu. It's also the one for lust, right? It, it, it means that you is, it's the motivation to go out into the world to grab things, to, to, to seek and to greedy. Greed and desire um, are 
both thoughts, but one of them, desire, has a little more chemical fire behind it in your system. Greed is just like, oh, I want that. Desire is, I need that. You know, it's a one step further to pushing you out. And then lust is kind of the result of not catching that. And that's a significant, from the Buddhist point of view, right here is wisdom or no wisdom, is gong fu or no gong fu. I think it's not the case that most cultivators never have any thoughts of, gee, I would like that. But if you have gong fu, you go, yeah, and remember what happened last time when you went out for that, how it was a disaster. Why don't you be patient and look at, appreciate what you have, or even give what you have. Trade that sense of, I want more for the joy that comes from giving, from sharing. That's Kung Fu, is to be able to, not that these thoughts don't arise, but you see them and you go, yeah, what if? Don't move, be patient, and let's look at it. That's real skill. It's when you can catch your thoughts, step away from them, and ask, is it fighting, is it greed, is it seeking, is it selfishness, is it self-benefit, is it dishonest? If it's not, sometimes that's good. You know, you don't always cut it off. Sometimes if it's selfless and wholesome, you go ahead. But this is, there's another side. I mean to stop. We're, we're at our end of our lecture, lecture time. Um, the, the other reality here is there is a time when someone has just begun a process of cultivation, particularly left home monastics, right? Someone who is uh, committed to cultivate the way and they have just begun to step away from the, uh, the, the nuclear family, their family, their spouse, their kids, their parents, their grandparents, their extended family. They are living in community alone, living alone together, right, in a monastic community. And that's, that's been described as turning the course of a river around. That's how hard it is. It's a great reversal, they call it. And every monastic who's ever left home, no matter the tradition, has always faced this. And at that point, for the teacher to say, cut this off, you have to, understand, you have to see it the way it is. You have now committed to liberation and freedom that comes from radical sufficiency inside. So you stop love, and you will, because you're on the path to wake up. That's another whole story. So you could say this teaching, when it's aimed at monastics who are committed to a new lifestyle, that makes sense. But to go to a happy lay family and say, cut off desire and cast out love, that's not expedient. You know, we'll never have good Buddhist families if you're all cutting off desire and casting out love. Right? So there's another situation where this, you know, the hard interpretation of this might make sense. But in terms of the cultivation towards an ending of suffering, especially in terms of our text today, this is pretty good. Okay, fun, huh? People enjoy this? This was the next one we were going to go to, we'll do that next week. Should we do more of this? What do you think? Is this? Yeah, I think everybody nodded their head when you said if if it, if people oh, enjoyed oh, it. <laughs> cool. Um, I we're still taking nominations. I got long lists. We got lots and lots of lists, and some are immediately fun. You know, uh, immediately they're like, yeah, I want to. What does that mean? I've had trouble with that phrase forever. So email me or tell Jin Chuan, Jin Ho Shi, Jin Chen Shi, and we'll uh, we'll put it on a list of, of phrases to to unpack as we go. All right, good. Let us transfer the merit. Oh, uh, before we go, before we go, announcements. You want to tell us what's going on? Well, we have one more week of Chan. Uh, next week we'll have one more day, the third week on Saturday. Of the Chan session, so people are welcome to come. 
We'll be starting with our beginners class about 8.30 in the morning, and we'll be finishing about 3.50 in the afternoon. Um, and after that, we'll be going back to our regular Saturdays. Um, throughout the week, basically, most of the classes have been stopped, but Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday night are still happening. And so people who would like to come for our Dharma classes, you're welcome to come for that. Otherwise, um, I don't think there's anything else happening. Is there anything? Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's transfer the mirror. Here we go. <laughs> Next week, Omito Four. Which one, Shri? You want to lead everybody in bowing? <laughs>